It's hard to imagine what it's like to be kidnapped. I've tried often, probably every day, for the last four years, imagining the unlimited scenarios. Any from the kidnapper's first contact to the actual abduction and the subsequent transport that has plagued me for many sleepless nights. It is hard not to focus on the betrayal he must have, have felt trusting that stranger, the absolute fear and possible pain he felt while maybe getting dragged away into some van or truck. Thinking of how they may have been subdued him. If he started to fight back, sadly, the only thing that brings me some measure of comfort is imagining him poking an eye out or bursting the sun of a bitch's testicle with a hard kick. I wish that's where my imagination ends when I dwell on my son's kidnapping, but it is not true that the rabbit hole is deep and filled with things that take days off my life just by the thought of it. Truth is, neither myself nor now my ex-husband know what really happened. At times, I believe. I am literally in hell on earth. My world has been upside down since my son went missing from my yard. Thinking towards the future is impossible for me now. So my days are cramped up in my home, reliving every detail of the day he went missing. Most disturbing, however, is that the most mundane of things torture the worst. Veering through the kitchen window into the backyard, I haven't visited in four years, and seeing the sun drained, abandoned, swing set and slide, hearing the theme song for the kids shows he routinely watched, seeing the back of a head on a child who slightly resembles mine. If he were four years older, the grocery store or park, or everywhere. The worst, however, is the sound of the phone ringing. Every time it sounds, my body gets filled with the most conflicting emotions. Is this the call I find out? He is dead or alive? Or worst, that it is neither, truth be told. Knock on the door is equivalent, is equally as jarring. Never more so than today. As it turned out, when I opened the door, a large man in uniform greeted me with tender eyes and said, Ma'am, we received a call today. Apparently, one of your neighbours allowed the cat to get out of the house. The two sentences couldn't have been more crushing. Another dagger of lost hope for me. But this cut especially deep to two the T's of his blue uniform. As the disappointment drenched me from head to soul, the gentleman continued to ask me for a favour. Over the years, the ground under the houses in this neighbourhood tend to sink quite a bit. Silly cats love nesting down there. Would you mind if we go into your backyard and retrieve the cat from under your house? Ma'am, are you okay? He obviously knew I wasn't. As the blood rushed from my head to my broken heart, I meekly mumbled, why didn't I know that?